everybody, welcome to another video of Boo's Grab Bag. Today we're gonna play some Like a Dragon. All my videos will be animated, yada yada yada. Make sure, grab, make sure you guys grab your drinks, grab your snacks, and let's get this party started. Okay, now, where are we going? Okay, there's enemies coming, so let me just go into here. This game has violence, and it also has ba I don't- it has no blood out that. Okay, it has blood somewhat. And bad language. I went ahead and got started. You sure you don't mind treating me? What? Are you actually able to pay? Wish I could, but I don't think they take this. You don't sound like you're gonna relax during this meal. Depends on what you say. Hopefully I'll relax enough to enjoy the duck. So, uh, how do you know Arakawa-san? I'm on the edge of my seat here. It wasn't long after the war the counterfeit bills started being produced in Ijincho. It was top secret. Only the heads of the Seiryu clan and the Liuman, plus some officers, knew about it. Outside of that inner circle, they also had to hire people to smuggle the bills. Smugglers? One of them was a traveling actor. His name was Toshio Arakawa. He was Masumi Arakawa's father. What? One day, he came to us saying he lost an entire suitcase filled with a hundred mil in fake yen. No excuse in the world could have saved him. A mistake that grave required the Seiryu clan to make an example out of him for the other smugglers. <laughs> but remember, only a few people at the top even knew about the counterfeiting. It wasn't a task they could hand to just anybody. So I, being next in line to inherit the clan, was entrusted to carry it out. So did you... you actually... Yes. I killed Toshio Arakawa, father of Masumi Arakawa, in this very place, 40 years ago. But I had no idea who was in the room with my target. By the time I learned it was his 14-year-old son. It was too late. I had to go through with the hit, knowing this boy would see his father die. To make my guilt even worse, later I found out why Toshio lost the fake bills. His wife and her lover had stolen them. And those two fell into the ocean and disappeared. Their corpses were never even found. So Arakawa-san lost both his parents, one after the other. And his only other friends, the theater troupe, disbanded soon after without their leader. Masumi Arakawa became a drifter, along with a few other actors. They couldn't trust anyone, so what other path was there for them, except becoming Yakuza in Kamurocho? So... Okay, do I, am I reading this or... okay. Arakawa joined a low-ranking family in the Tojo clan called the Hikawa family. Life wasn't easy for him there. They were the kind of family that took hits without thinking twice. Really? Yes. So they were always in need of ways to dispose of a body. Masumi Arakawa was tapped to help with that. And he was extremely cautious. To do it, he started coming all the way to the homeless camp in Ijincho. Really? Even though the family was based in Tokyo? Why? Well, truthfully, he wanted an excuse to come to Yokohama. Because it would afford him opportunities to hunt his father's killer. I see. 
So Arakawa-san was using the homeless camp to dispose of bodies all the way back then. Indeed. As for his hunt, he researched Yakuza and criminals every time he was here. All he started with was a single clue. His own childhood memory of the suspicious waiter he saw here that night. Eventually, seven years after the murder, I received an invitation to come here. He signed his invitation, Matsumi Arakawa. It was a bold declaration, and I knew immediately the running would be futile. So I came here, alone. I didn't even bring a bodyguard. Why the hell not? Well, to put it simply, I was prepared to die. But, I mean... In this line of work, there are no good ways to die. And I can think of worse ways to go that would not give that boy the justice he'd earned. The memory of what I'd done to him never left me, you know. It was always like a small bone stuck in my throat. He was sitting right where you are now. Here? Yes. He didn't look a day over twenty. But his eyes had that hard, flinty gaze of an old killer. I couldn't help myself. I told him everything. I told him why I killed Toshio Arakawa. I even told him about the secret counterfeiting. I figured I was dead anyway. He had a gun in his hand, and all he had to do was pull the trigger. But he never once interrupted me. When I'd finished, he slowly stood up. I stopped him as he turned to leave. Didn't you come here for revenge? I asked. And? What did he say? He said, If only you had ignored my invitation, then I could have shot you in the back. Then, he left. Uh, boss. In 1984, the 10,000 yen bill changed from the face of Prince Shotoku Yukichi Fukuzawa. By that time, Arakawa had found his own Yakuza family. So I sent him a gift. What was it? A fresh batch of crisp, fake bills featuring Yukichi Fukuzawa. They were defective prints with nothing on the back. <laughs> Not exactly legal tender. Then, how was that a gift? It's hard to explain. If I had to say, I was out of gratitude. Sure, but for what? I should have died that day I met with Arakawa. I would have been right. And yet he spared me. Not only that, but he lifted a terrible weight from my chest. Furthermore, it's not an exaggeration to say the equilibrium among the e 3 continues to this day because of him. Wow. I owe him an unfathomable debt. And one day, I... I must pay it back. The defective bills were how I chose to communicate the sentiment. Counterfeiting secret is Ijincho's weakness. And it was only thanks to Arakawa that the Ijin Three could continue to secretly wield that power. But of course, that means if he ever feels like it was a mistake to let me live, he could use the fake bills to unravel everything I've built. The gift wasn't the bills themselves, they were leverage. I actually wrote something on the back to that effect. Neither justice nor mercy should tip the scale. It means that those in power must reward and punish where necessary. 
I felt it was an appropriate message. I suppose the writing has faded at this point. Whoa. So that's the whole story. Up till this moment. But now I'm sitting across from a man holding one of those fake pills. Which, of course, is a message from Arakawa that only I could understand. The message is, Masumi Arakawa sees you as a beloved family member. Arakawa-san thinks of me as family. He would not have placed that bill in your pocket lightly. Do you see its significance now? After everything I've told you? There is almost no doubt in my mind that Arakawa did not want you killed. So he didn't shoot you out of malice. He shot you so that you would be brought here, be saved by the homeless, and eventually meet up with me. Do you see? <sighs> That's everything I can tell you. That's plenty. Thank you, Chairman. I see it all now. I always kind of figured. You did? Well, it's your move now. I've only told you what I know, so... It's okay. That's enough. I trust you. <laughs> well, I don't hear that often. Yeah, neither do I. Not even from my friends. But those friends are trustworthy to me. And so are you. I believe everything you said. And... My faith in Arakawa-san is coming back strong. Kasuga. Yeah? Are you... a blood relative of Arakawa's? <laughs> no. It's not like that. I see. Well... He must have been happy to have such loyalty as yours. As proud as any father. Well, that was an interesting uh, air plate story. It made me tear. It made me tear up a little. <laughs> uh, brother. Okay. Now we're going for our next chapter. So this will be chapter 11. So I believe we have four more chapters after Nagata this one. Nagatacho has been rocked by party chair Ogikubo's sudden retirement due to illness. Long a central figure in politics, Ogikubo was the prime minister's last ally in keeping parliament together. An election shall be held to reaffirm the will of the people. I look forward to a new citizens liberal party and a new cabinet. The Prime Minister made more shockwaves later that day. In the afternoon, he announced he would appoint Ryo Aoki to Ogikubo's now vacant post. Aoki will be the first sitting governor to also serve as the ruling party's chair. This bold move is sure to have ripple effects. Mm. So the chairman was right. How are you feeling, former chairman? Surely the governor of Tokyo can read. My sign says no visitors. Oh, suddenly rules are important to you. Naturally. Shouldn't you concern yourself with the rules you've already broken? For example, counterfeiting. Your crimes put the entire national economy at risk. Do you know how many lives were saved by what you call a crime? Hundreds. Any politician can say they built a road or passed a law. But how many can say they caught people who fell through the cracks? You think you're talented enough to do that in my stead? Oh, I've got plenty of talents. I just use them very differently compared to you. For example, 
I managed to fit your downfall to my already very busy schedule. The governor is the party chair. Nothing could be more ripe for corruption. Oh. Everything I'm gonna do will be labeled scandalous by withered old men like you. But by next year, Japan will have a new standard, and it will have been written by me. Spoken like a true amateur. <laughs> amateur, huh? Let me ask you. Do you remember my first election ten years ago? I asked you for the Citizens Liberal Party endorsement. You insulted me. Your exact words were, Bleach Japan is a bunch of kids playing at politics. Your home district is Kanagawa's second. Isn't that right? I'm happy to tell you. Bleach Japan will be running a candidate there in the next election cycle. And he'll have the Citizens Liberal Party's ringing endorsement. So, how does it feel to have everything taken from you by a bunch of kids? Oh, Our candidate's victory in Kanagawa's District 2 is all but certain. So I've come up with a plan for taking out the trash in Ijincho. Of course, we'll probably lose half the population. Are you calling the people of Ijincho trash? I'm calling them disposable. Pardon me? What did you call them? People who fell through the cracks? Can't you see that's their own fault for becoming so dependent on the Grey Zones? They're responsible for maintaining their home, and they fail. That's what makes them disposable. Oh, but I must be racing. going. As I said, I've got a busy schedule. Happy retirement, my former chair. I truly wish that for you. <sighs> I hope you'll visit Ijincho after its beautiful new developments are complete. You'll hardly recognize it. And I can't wait to see the look on your face when you see it. Okay, so that, that was a that heart rate monitor was going fast. Using those heart rate monitors go fast when your heart races. If there's no one talking about that little beep 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 noise was a heart meter thing. So that guy was getting the guy in the bed was getting angry at Alki. Or young master, I like to call him because I'm I'm not butchering that name. So like young master. Because he Alki, Yoki, or how you say the stupid name? I'm not going there, so I'm gonna stick with young master, because that's who he is. That's how we all know him. The wheelchair oh, boy. It's your hideout? Yep, go ahead. Make yourself at home. I'd love to, but uh where could I even do that? Yes. The square footage of this place leaves something to be desired. Well, excuse me. I'm hearing some pretty high standards for a couple of pad crashers. We're not crashing it. Nambasan gave us permission. <laughs> Who the hell says no to Jungi Han when he has to stay the night? I mean, it's freaking Jungi Han. Hey, where are the rest of your people now that Komi Jewel HQ is gone? They're fixing the surveillance system. It will take some time for it to be fully restored. Well, I get why Jungi Han is staying here since his place is a pile of ashes. But what's Zhao's excuse? It's not like I could just keep living in Ching Chen after stepping down from the Liu Meng. Wouldn't have sent the right message. So, I joined the ranks of Romulus. Still doesn't explain why you need to stay here. Maybe because information collects where people do. And this group does seem to be in the know. We do? But we don't even know what happened to Bleach Japan. Did the police ever put a stop to all that craziness? The police? kasuga -kun. Haven't you seen the news? No, I haven't had the time. Well... Bleach Japan's reputation in Eugene Show, hell all of Japan, is golden after the Komijo thing. What? Oh yeah, you wouldn't believe the headlines. 
Despite peril, brave Bleach Japan topples Komijo Gang. Grassroots Org achieves what police never could. Shit like that. Wow, great journalism. No spin at all. That's not even the worst of it. The reports say that Komijo committed arson during its fight with Bleach Japan. And in the blaze, Bleach Japan director Ogasawara perished. He's dead? What happened? He was definitely alive after the fire. That's when we interrogated him. Yeah, then the Omi Alliance rescued him. Why would he be... <sighs> Wait, did they...? Yes. They probably killed him. I had that thought right away. At least he died the way he wanted to. As a hero of the revolution. <laughs> that guy? A hero? Why they kill him? Because he squawked like a bird when you interrogated him. Why wouldn't they off the guy? Nana just milking his death for all it's worth. Honestly, it's a brilliant move, making it look like he died in the Comey Jewel fire. No crime reports, cops and doctors wouldn't bat an eye. And Bleach Japan gets a nice, tragic death to go on about. Ah, damn. I wish we'd picked a fight with dumber enemies. But what can we do? Go to the police and explain how we abducted Ogasawara? What would be the point? Half the force is on Mabuchi's payroll. Now they would just book our asses. So Aoki has everyone marching along to his little tomb. All in step. No master. Okay, Bleach Japan's got us by the short hairs there. But what about the fact they were trespassing on Komijo property? Well, they must have figured the public would think the ends justified the means. And they were right. The public thinks Bleach Japan is the hero of this story. The police will never prosecute them for trespassing. At this rate, the Komijo and the Liu Mong are going to be extinct in Ijin Cho. And people like you who give us shelter will be an endangered species. I wish I didn't have to say this, but I suggest you make other living arrangements. I can't. I'm waiting for someone to contact me here. Who? Arakawa-san? He's about to go all in with his next gamble. When that happens, he'll need strong allies. M more than he's already got? I can't say anymore. I'm sorry. Me too. I'll be in touch. Hmm. <laughs> well then. But isn't Masumi Arakawa the man who shot you? The boss wasn't trying to kill me. He shot me so I could live. Sorry, but don't you think that's still kind of fucked up? It's a long story. Buy me a beer sometime and I'll tell you all about it. But right now, while we've got you on the team, we need to get shit done. We need to stock up on money and supplies because nobody knows what the hell will happen next. That's for sure. Okay, wait. Okay, let's check the timer. And when we're checking the timer, I'm going to... Oh! That guy can have that gun on our team, too. I'm not going to worry about him, though. Hmm. Okay, I guess that was a good time. So let's go and check on all that, our friendly tree. Hey. Oh, good, good, I think. Sure. Hmm? Okay. 
okay, that's our mission right there, okay. I'm just gonna do a little small missions. Check out the Looks like the persimmon's okay. That was a really close call with that sumo wrestler. It should be fine now. Whoa! What the? Damn wind. Next one will get it. That pretty little persimmon's going down. Oh, fucking <laughs> babies! Damn, these little bastards hurt. I don't know what's going on here, but I need to stop that maniac, or the persimmon's gonna get shot. Hey, stop shooting the fruit! Huh? Who the hell are you? Oh. You're that idiot who was dancing near my target. I wasn't dancing. You shot me, you dipshit! Did I? Oh, I'm sorry. Don't worry. I'll make sure the next one's on target. Hold up! Cease fire! What have you got against the fruit? I have nothing against that persimmon. We're just testing something out. Testing what out? I'm a big military fanboy. I had this sniper rifle imported from overseas, and it just arrived today. What do you think? Pretty cool, huh? It's a dream come true for a bolt-action lover like me. And I also can't complain about how genuine the specs are. Steel cylinder for maximum durability. The trigger even has that real authentic click. Anyway, I was wanting to test this baby out when, lo and behold, I found the perfect target. That pesky persimmon. Ah, oh, I get you. That's why you were shooting at it. That's cool and all, but you mind switching targets? What? I can't have you shooting at that persimmon. You see, there's this girl who's sick and... That's a negative! What? Why? A sniper never lets his target live. And I'm gonna put it down with my new partner here. Dude, it's a toy. Calm down. If you still intend to stop us, then you'll be our first hit! Okay. Let's see. Well. Okay. That guy ain't dying fast. Yeah. That guy's an idiot. What's that sound? The heck? What now? Oh, he's hammering a straw doll to the persimmon tree. Wait, persimmon tree? Ah! Hey! What the hell do you think you're doing? None of your business. I'm casting a hex. Now scram! Yo, hold up, man! You stop that hex right now! Then why you gotta hurt the tree? You'll never understand how I feel. I'm gonna cast the hex on her. Her? Yes, on Hitomi, my classmate, and my girlfriend. You're putting a curse on your girlfriend? 
What the hell for? I finally realized she never cared about me. I caught her kissing my senpai from the soccer team. Right here in front of this tree. For fuck's sake. Of all places for the shit to go down. So I'm casting a hex. Hammering this doll right into their special spot. Oh, wait. I know it really sucks for your girl to have betrayed you like that. But this won't solve anything. She might have had a reason for doing what she did. Are you taking her side too? Huh? Nobody understands how I feel. Everybody always takes her side. No, that's not what I mean. Enough! I'll cast a hex on anyone who sides with that traitor. And you're first, Shrubby! What is the Edward Judge in his fair style? Watch me. Yeah, scrub, scrub your ass. Oh, scruffy. それでは。So a girl touched his hand when she back as a racer. I thought they were in love. That's a weird relationship, Sam. No relationship ma making. Gotta see a, one of the weird mo one of the weird animals he has. <laughs> I forget what his last animal is. I think it's like a gorilla. If it's a gorilla, I'm gonna laugh because I fought two dangerous animals, and it's a no, it's, a, it's only it's a monkey. Oh, it's not bad. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Oh. Yeah. Arigatou gozaimasu. Hmm? Yo. Ha 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 ha. Hi. 
a weird guy. He needs to give up on his job of an animal trainer because this is ridiculous. He lost his bear. He lost his I tiger. She came this way. The hell is she? There she is! Clarachan, come back! Oh, no. Oh, no. Please don't go oh, in there. Shit. Go tell me. Uh, of course. Clear Clara's on the digger. Shit, shit. This is bad. Where'd she learn to handle that thing? Haven't you? Must have been watching the construction workers from her cage. Seriously? <laughs> son, please, this will be my final request. Please save Clara Chan. If this keeps up, we'll all be in grave danger. <laughs> yeah, I heard you the first two times. screwed. This ability, this might do a lot of damage. I got this. That did no 
damage. Hmm. How about a sniper shot? That did yes. nothing. Huh? Bring it on. Oh no. Not too bad, what? I guess. Take this supply. A gift for you. That does more damage than anything they have. You're important. Try this on the side. Oh, I'm so sorry. That do nothing. Yeah. Bring it on. Don't get caught. Oh, that gives us, um, strength and defense. Okay, that's good to know. It's not bad. I'll probably get some serious damage done if I use this. That's a lot. Okay, that's not much damage, I guess. Bring it on. Not bad, oh no. Take a good shot. Come on now. You're gonna get me soft. That didn't do nothing. Oh, this again. Let's go! What's up with this? I can't 
This should kill it. Yes. That was so close. Nice. Oh, that's cool. They leveled up. Okay. It's finally stopped. Yasuna san. Where's Clara? Uh, I have her. She seems rather burnt out, but at least she's safe. Oh, good. Still, what a freaking mess. How the hell we get out of this one? Hey, did you see that? <laughs> that was one heck of a performance. <gasps> Is this part of the circus? Gotta be. Herm Boy versus the Almighty Digger Chimp. Oh, now that's entertainment. I was on the edge of my seat. Ooh, and how about that fire? These people are idiots. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we hope you've enjoyed this act. Please enjoy the rest of the show as we present to you another act over on that stage. Wow, there's a stage show too? Think it'll be as exciting as the one we just saw? Let's check it out. Ooh, hot stuff, man. Well, back to the old grind. <laughs> huh? You go! Thank you very much for today, Hasanasan. <laughs> Please accept this as one last token of my appreciation. I really hope this is the last time. I seriously thought that chimp was gonna kill me. Indeed. I truly can't thank you enough, Kaskasai. Oh, and this isn't just for all the times you've helped. It's also for showing me a whole new side of excitement from the audience. I've been doing this circus for a long time now. Animals riding balls, jumping through hoops, things that you can see at any circus, really. I wasn't able to break this circus away from what's considered old hat. Sure, there were plenty of smiles in the crowd, but was there anything more? Yasuda-san. Next thing you know, we've got a fierce battle between man and bear, then man and tiger, and finally, man and excavator driving chimp! It was these spectacles that kept the crowd on the edge of their seats, their eyes glued to the performance. The thrill, the surprise, the excitement, the joy, all combined to form some truly immersive experiences. I want to continue providing audiences with more fantastic outings like those. <laughs> that right. And with that, I have just one last final request. Would you do me the honor of joining our circus? Uh, me? Yes, you and my precious animals would make the ultimate team. I'm confident that we could even become Japan's number one circus. Well, I, uh, I'll do my best to get us an excavator of our own. I'll take out a loan, or would you prefer a dump truck? I'll get a tank for all I care. I ain't joining the circus. Ah, <laughs> oh, don't be like that. We could be the most famous circus in the world with a troop like ours. <laughs> Look, I'll be real with you. No more animals! <laughs> Wait, don't go! Kasuga-san! <laughs> Like the guys in the background, I'm like <laughs> the way he ended it. Oh wait, we have a chip for that um money thing. Okay, let's check the timer again. Oh, well, that was awesome-ish. Almost dying, but we did good. Pretty good. The rest mm, very and I'm good. Voice that. Mm, guess 
how you do that. It works. Equipment. Okay, we are we are almost out of time, so. Can equip that I want to use Tiger Belt? No. Okay, not really. Wait, yeah, not right the second. Okay, so I hope you guys like this video, like and subscribe, and the waiter guy is drunk. Of course, I shouldn't may have drink that. Anyway, make sure I hope you guys enjoy this, like and subscribe. Make sure you guys share this video. Hope you guys had fun. I know I did. And I'll see you guys next time.